Uh, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, depolarization, repolarization, and hyperpolarization. So, best way to kind of start to look at this is that even when a cell isn't per se doing anything, it's still doing something. It still has to do stuff to be able to maintain that constant homeostasis. And I mean, that's really the goal of everything within your body. So let's kind of just look at that. All right. And home, without homeostasis, we would die. Um, now, homeostasis does not necessarily mean equilibrium or an equilibrium constant because if you're if your body ever reached a perfect equilibrium then well then I mean you would be dead so anytime that your bodily function leaves homeostasis that's that's when sickness arises so let's um let's look at this so best way to kind of start is to think of this as almost like a like a wacky QRS complex so let me just draw this out real quick. Okay, so we're going to say that this, and let me just color coordinate all this stuff here. So the red is going to be where an action potential occurs, and that's going to be And then the blue is going to be where it normally is at negative 70 millivolts. And then this down here, we're going to have it in green, is negative 90 millivolts. Now, anywhere from here down. So anything more negative than a negative 70 millivolt or more negative than the cell normally is, is going to be considered hyperpolarization. Now, when a cell is hyperpolarized, it is very difficult, if not impossible, for the cell to have an action potential. Now, when the cell is at negative 70 millivolts, this is considered the resting membrane potential. Oh, that didn't write out correctly. So, at plus 33 millivolts, this is where all the action happens. So this is your action potential, or your repol or, or your depolarization. So depolarization is on the way up. and it's where your action potential occurs. And then on your way back down, is considered your repolarization. Now, repolarization always follows a depolarization. In other words, Depolarization will occur first, where it travels in a less negative direction, and then repolarization occurs, where it travels in a more negative direction. Now, when that action potential gets there, so boom, an action potential arrives. It's going to cause this to start to become less negative, so it's going to depolarize, 
until it reaches the plus 33 millivolts. Now this can change, there is some variation um, from neuron to neuron, but for the most part, all the textbooks talk about plus 33 millivolts. So it's gonna get there, plus 33 millivolts hits, action potential continues on to the next spot down the neuron, and then now this is gonna be in an absolute refractory period. And then it's gonna travel back down, it's gonna repolarize, but because the cell is imperfect and it's not a, um, it's not a computer where you can set parameters, it doesn't know exactly to stop at this negative 70 millivolt threshold. So what ends up happening is it overcompensates and it goes all the way down to negative 90 millivolts. Now, when it's down here, it won't stay down here. If it does, then there's some sort of a pathological problem. But the cell will, in a sense, equilibria, equilibriaize to um, the uh, chemical concentrations that are there between sodium and potassium and the negative proteins inside the cell and it will return back to negative 70 millivolts as um, potassium continues to leak out of the cell.